Um, so we were talking about external convection, right? We said that we are going to focus first on external, then on internal, then on natural convection. So now we are essentially learning how to use this table, have it somewhere, this table, table 6.6, .6, right, for external convection. And this is a table you must have for exam two for sure. Okay, so have that in mind. Um, we said that there are several correlations of the nozzles that are presented in the chapter, but they are not in this table. So you need to write them somewhere in the table or in a separate uh, paper sheet. Um, we went through this one, right, to this correlation that was not there, and I asked you to write in, in this 6.6 .6 table. And we were talking about spheres. We revised the drag force for a sphere, the drag coefficient. We checked this figure to get a drag coefficients for both spheres and cylinders in order to then use the drag coefficient to calculate the drag force, right? Uh, we went through this equation, right? And this equation, you don't have to take note because you have it here in your table 6.6 is a sphere in gas or a liquid, and is the equation we are going to use right, right away to solve a problem. Important features about this equation is that this new S, or dynamic viscosity of the surface, is based on the wall uh, temperature of the sphere, okay? Also, all the properties in the equation are based in the free stream velocity, in the free stream temperature, not the film temperature. So those are those um, characteristics of this equation that you need to have in mind, especially when reading equations. Uh, sorry, when reading the properties in the back of your book. So let's solve then this sphere using this previous equation. So again, open your book in table 6.6 .6 because you are using this equation is feeding a gas or a liquid table 6.6. .6. Remember, new S is read at the wall temperature and the rest, are, the rest of the properties are based on the free stream rather than on the film temperature. What is the film temperature? The average of the wall plus free stream divided by two, right? Um, so we have a four centimeter diameter sphere that experiences a cross flow of 27 Celsius atmospheric air at a velocity of 3.6 meters per second. If the temperature of the sphere surface is 177 Celsius, what is the convective heat transfer from the sphere? So again, first step would be to read the properties at the required temperatures, right? We need to read the viscosity at the wall temperature or the sphere temperature, right? And the rest of the properties at 27, that is the free stream velocity um, temperature, right? So I have here the properties. So properties of air at the free stream temperature of 27, um, more or less 300 Kelvin. I have density, viscosity, kinematic, viscosity, uh, uh, the thermal conductivity, and the brand. Um, we also need to use this equation for the sphere, the dynamic viscosity of the air at the surface temperature of 177 Celsius. So I have it here. Next step would be to get the Reynolds number, right? Uh, this Reynolds number serves two main objectives. What is the first main objective? To check the regime, right? To decide on an equation, right? And then also, it's, it, we typically plug the Reynolds number in our nozzle equations because the nozzle heavily relates to the regime of the flow, right? So those are the two main purposes. Uh, the calculation of the Reynolds number serves as so in this case, I already identified the equation. Um, so I get my Reynolds number uh, with the diameter because the diameter is the length that describes a sphere, right? And then once I have the Reynolds number, I plug into the nozzles and I get my nozzle number. After getting my nozzle number, I can get the H or convective heat transfer coefficient out of the nozzle. 
because if you remember, the definition of the nozzle uh, is interrelated with the convective heat transfer coefficient. So convective heat transfer coefficient equals nozzle and thermal conductivity divided by the diameter. That is the length that describes a sphere in this case. So we have a value of H of 35 more or less, and we are ready to put into Newton's cooling law. Uh, this is something we learned before, right? So uh, the convective heat transfer coefficient times the area of convection times T surface or T hot minus T surroundings or T cold. So we get 26.6 watts. Okay, uh, the next geometry, remember that we are in general uh, evaluating three types of geometries, either in conduction or convection, the plate, the sphere, and the cylinder. So cylinder are something we use almost every every day, right? And especially in this course, since we are focusing in heat exchanger, cylinder is a um, major geometry that will play an important role when we reach heat exchangers. So if we consider a circular cylinder in cross flow, we will have more or less this kind of profile. We have here the free stream velocity, right? And we have here the, um, the presence of an stagnation point where the boundary layer on the cylinder begins to develop. Then due to the shape or the geometry, we have a delta P or change in pressure uh, that we denote as the separation point. This separation point gives rise to uh, the uh, formation of turbulence or wake. Uh, where we will have the formation of these vortices, that is this kind of flow patterns that you observe in here. So all of these uh, kind of um, flow changes is what you can observe in a circular cylinder in cross flow. So as you can see here on the top, we have very nice streamline, right? But then here due to the geometry itself, we have the formation of turbulence. So it's something that you um, need to have in mind when dealing with external convection in cylinders. Uh, when we evaluate cylinders, um, we, again, we will be using figure 6.6 .6 to get the drag coefficient. And uh, from the drag coefficient, get the drag force. Why? Because we are evaluating fluids on top of solid surfaces and the drag force becomes important, right? Again, um, I have here the formula for the drag coefficient or the drag force, whatever you want to find. Um, you have the two variables here involved in this equation. FD is the drag force, CD drag coefficient, A is the projected frontal area of the body that for a cylinder is the DL. Uh, for experimental studies, values of the drag coefficients for cylinders as a function of Reynolds are presented in figure 6.6. .6. And this figure is a figure I already showed to you last class because the same figure contains drag coefficients for a sphere and for cylinders, right? So we are going to solve next a problem for a cylinder and a, that problem requires us to calculate the drag, um, the drag force. So we will be employing this equation, so have it in mind. Um, this is the equation we are going to use in next slide to calculate the drag force. So this is the figure you have in your book, figure 6.6, .6, to get the drag coefficients as a function of the Reynolds for both uh, bluff bodies, the cylinders and the spheres. Okay. Um, so I already gave you the equation to calculate the drag force for a cylinder. How you can calculate the nozzle then, because we need the nozzle, right? To get the convective heat transfer coefficient and the heat transfer rate by convection. So the average nozzle for a circular cylinder normal to gas or liquid flow, the one I showed you in the previous slide, right? Uh, is this equation in this equation 6.3 in your textbook. See that the nozzle does has this little d, okay? The nozzles will have all those small letters from now on because this reminds you that the nozzle is based on the cylinder diameter. If it has a small l, it, mean, it means that it's based on the length of the plate, right? So that little letter there near the nozzle will tell you what is the length that you need to use to calculate the nozzle, right? In this case, nozzle based on the diameter. 
So for, again, uh, circular cylinders normal to glass or liquid flow, we use this equation. But as, as you can see, we have different parameters. We have the parameter C, the parameter M, the parameter N. So parameter C and M come from table 6.1. So locate that table in your book. Uh, what about the N? Well, if your prime number is less than 10, N equals 0.37. And this is in your textbook. So when you go to your textbook to equation 6.3, it tells you these limitations of the prompt. And for prompt bigger than one, n equals 0.36, okay? So let's see at your table 6.6. .6. This is the table you will be using for circular cylinders, okay? To get parameter C and M for a circular cylinder as a function of the Reynolds. Um, so we are solving this circular cylinder. What you need to solve for drag force and also heat transfer, um, convective heat transfer from the cylinder. So you need to get the nozzle, the H, and then put into Newton's cooling law. So we have atmospheric nitrogen at 150 Celsius flowing across a long five centimeter diameter circular cylinder at a velocity of 20 meters per second. The surface temperature of the cylinder is 500 on a per unit length basis, okay? So you are going to define the length as one. That's correct. Um, find first the drag force exerted on the cylinder and B, the convective heat transfer from the cylinder. Assume that the brand equals the brand wall or the brand surface. So this brand S means brand wall, brand surface, okay? Uh, what is the first thing we need to do? Get the properties. We are going to get the properties at the field temperature. Okay, so get the average at 150 plus 500 divided by two. That will give you your field temperature. That is the temperature you need to go to tables and read the properties of nitrogen in this case. So nitrogen at 325. Celsius, that is the average of uh, 500 plus 150. Um, so, T surroundings, or t in this case is free stream, sorry, free stream plus T wall divided by two is 325, around 598 Kelvin. So the properties of nitrogen at this film temperature are density here, kinematic viscosity, thermal conductivity, and the prime, that the prime is going to be equal to the prime wall or prime surface. To find the drag force exert on the cylinders, we must calculate the Reynolds. Why? Because we are going to use our figure 6.6 .6 to read the drag coefficient, right? That was the first question, what is the drag force? So I'm going to get my Reynolds as a function of the diameter. That's why I have this little d here. So the velocity times the diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity gives me 1.94 10 to the 4. With this Reynolds, I can go now to my figure 6.6. .6. So please go to your figure 6.6 .6 and check. You can read a drag coefficient in the area and more or less the area I have here in this slide. So with the drag coefficient, now you can get what? The drag force, right? Because we have the equation, right? To get the drag coefficient, the drag force, or we know in the drag coefficient. So I have it here. And the projected frontal area for a cylinder is the product of the length and the diameter. Because we are making the calculation on a per meter length basis, we express the frontal area as well as the diameter, right? So it would be five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. So I have everything now to put in my drag force, drag force equation. I have the drag coefficient, I have the density, I have velocity, I have the diameter, and I put the length here because I'm doing a per meter length basis calculation. So I was able to get 6.20 newtons per meter. The next part of the, the problem, I will let you solve it. 
so you can give me the answer. I need to see um, how you have already the Reynolds, right? You have already the properties. Um, what you need to do is to get the nozzles, and for the nozzle, you need to read parameters from the table 6.1. So you can get the nozzle, the H, and the heat transfer rate at this point. So the brand is less than 10. So straightforward, we can know that N equals 0.37, right? And for the constant um, or the, the coefficient C and M, we have the Reynolds, right? We calculate already the Reynolds. So we can go to this little table for circular cylinders and we can get that C equals 0.26, right? And M equals 0.6. So we have the three parameters C, M and N that will help us to get the nozzle number, uh, the nozzle number then for this uh, circular cylinder. So here again, C 0.26, M.6, these ones we got from the table, knowing the Reynolds number, N equals 0.37. Why? Because the brand is less than 10, right? So we put here the numbers to our nozzle equation for a circular cylinder under cross flow, and we get a nozzle of 85. Knowing the nozzle, we can get the convective heat transfer coefficient out of the nozzle. So the convective heat transfer coefficient is the nozzle times the thermal conductivity that we read from tables divided by the diameter of our cylinder. This will give us 75.85 watt meter square Kelvin. Knowing the H value, we can plug directly into Newton's cooling law, right? So the convective heat transfer from the cylinder per meter length, because we are doing per meter calculation, that was that the problem asked us to do. So you can put here one or you can put it here, whatever you want. Um, convective heat transfer coefficient times area for convection times delta T. This gives us 4,170 watts per meter. So what about if we don't have um, circular cylinders? So if we don't have circular cylinders, um, we have now uh, this equation. So this will be our nozzle equation that applies to gases flowing in cross flow over non-circular cylinders. And is valid for this range of Reynolds, where parameters B and N are listed in table 6.2, page 368 in your textbook. Once you have H, right, you calculate the convective heat transfer, where area is the perimeter of the object times the length, right? Because that's the area exposed to convection the outside surface area of the non-circular cylinder, right? That's the area where convective heat transfer coefficient or convective heat transfer is happening. Um, so let's look at the table. So you have this equation again in your table, don't need to write it, so that you don't need to add. Non-circular cylinder in gas and this table is so friendly that even it tells you where to look for the parameters. <laughs> so it says CC table, CC table 6.2. So table 6.2. Okay. And again, we have the N and B parameters for non-circular cylinders. So let's solve a problem then of a non-circular cylinder. So you can just apply this equation. Uh, atmospheric air at minus 20 Celsius flows across the hexagonal cylinder shown in the figure below at three meters per second. If the surface of the cylinder is maintained at 65 Celsius, what is the convective heat transfer again per meter length of, of the cylinder? So it's a non-circular cylinder. We know straightforward that our nozzle number is going to be given by the parameter B times the Reynolds to the N. And we know that we have a table to get those parameters. But first we need to get the properties, right? The properties at the film temperature. We get the film temperature, so 65 plus minus 20 divided by two will give us around 22.5 Celsius. or 295 Kelvin. 
I will read the properties at this temperature. So I have here uh, viscosity, thermal conductivity, and the brown. Knowing that, I can get the Reynolds. Knowing the Reynolds, I can get the nozzle for a non-circular cylinder. I can read then with the Reynolds B and N from table 6.2. Go to your table 6.2 and please be sure that these are the values you are getting or they are, it should be the same, it's a very small table. Then you get the nozzle, then you get the H. Once you get the H, you apply Newton's cooling law. So I can show you the table here, this could be the one, okay? Uh, please be very careful because this table is kind of very. I can be confusing if you don't, if you are not familiar with it. As you can see, we can have you have here two hexagons. One is just only rotated, but if it is, if it, the geometry changes a little bit, um, then that can change the Reynolds number and the n and b coefficients of look as you can see. So you need to use the exact geometry. The problem is. Mm, so as you can see, the area would be here kind of tricky. I think some of you already realized because it's an hexagon. And I have this formula that I don't expect you have, but I will write it here for you. So I will calculate the area, the convective area here. Six times diameter over two. You can approximate it any other way, just the hexagon multiplied by the length, right? But this is the correct one. Cosine, uh, I put cos D, this, D is for degrees, so put in degrees your calculator, 30, and all of these multiply it by the length, that the length would be one, because we are doing per, per meter length, so the area, or the surface area of this hexagonal cylinder exposed to convection will be six times 0 0.12 divided by two, divided by the cosine in degrees of 30. So 30 times one. And this gave me a surface area for convection equals of 0.4156 meter square. So again, we are having an hexagonal, right? Hexagonal shape. So what you want to know, what is the area exposed to the, to the convection, right? Is the outside surface area of that hexagonal cylinder. So it's the perimeter of the, cross section, right? Multiply it by the length because it's the outside that is exposed to convection. We are in external convection, remember that. For the other shapes, it's a little bit more easy to get that area. You have a squares, right? Um, you have a diamond there. I think one of the most common is the hexagon, even for uh, for two banks that we will see in next topic.